Mr. Speaker, thank you. Mr. Speaker, before I begin, my contribution on the Appropriation Bill 2023-2024, I would like to pay tribute, Mr. Speaker, to the architect of this budget. Mr. Speaker, I am referring to the Member of Parliament for Cashwis East, our Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, he is committed to the cause of advancing the interests and well-being of every St. Lucia. Relentless in his pursuit of excellence, brave in the face of adversity, and honest in every thought, word, and deed. Okay. With a heart of gold, Mr. Speaker, and acquired disposition, cognizant that the opportunity to lead St. Lucia was a mammoth task, and that it would be an uphill battle to steer our country back onto a path of prosperity. Yet, Mr. Speaker, while understanding the road ahead was not as easy after examining the state of affairs, he recognized that the inherent and unprecedented depressed economy, sorry, Mr. Speaker, he recognized that he had inherited an unprecedented depressed economy grossly mismanaged by his predecessor. During last year, Mr. Speaker, he has had to tackle the economic challenges confronting our country with a calmness, a thoroughness, and professional analytic vigor, which these times demand. Working with him, Mr. Speaker, as his apprentice, and I use the word apprentice, because I'm learning, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, to contain our inherited debt burdens, to shield our people from imported and rising inflationary prices, to ride the turbulent economic waters that destiny has called upon him to come. He has, for me, been a lesson in the art of effective leadership. I thank you, Member of Parliament for Castries East, Prime Minister of our beloved country, for your example, for your guidance, for your counseling, and I pledge my unwavering support as we continue to put the people of St. Lucia first. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, yesterday the member for Sozel, um, in his contribution, made some references to the youth economy, Mr. Speaker, and he made the point as to why it is that we needed to to create another agency. And I thought it would only be right, Mr. Speaker, that I, I put it in specific context. He is correct, Mr. Speaker. There are other existing initiatives, like the Boost, the Gateways to Global Careers, the Small Business Development Center, the St. Lucia Youth Business Trust, and the SLDB Youth Enterprise Equity Fund. But Mr. Speaker, what we recognize of all of those is that some sections of our society will not be enriched. I'll give you an example, Mr. Speaker. And he mentioned specifically Boost, Mr. Speaker. Of the hundreds of applications that were received and found support, 19 came from Cash Trees, 10 from Grosley, 5 from Viewfort, 3 from Soufre, and 2 from Ancillary Canneries. The point is, Mr. Speaker, the youth economy is meant to capture those who don't have the, what we would call the backer, or the name, or the collateral, Mr. Speaker. So the youth economy is targeting specifically those who have not been able, Mr. Speaker, to benefit from those existing training programs or existing initiatives to help with the young people of this country. Mr. Speaker, he also went on to make another point with regards to health and why it is that we thought it was necessary to include, Mr. Speaker, the, the 50 cents levy, 50% increase on the on the tobacco, Mr. Speaker. And I wanted to just read a little excerpt from a report with regards to the state of our healthcare in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the, the reason for the specific concern 
is that we recognize that rising NDC burden has been, has been responsible for increasing the mobility and mortality and reducing productivity, eroding our human capital and increasing healthcare costs. St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, like many other Caribbean islands, is experiencing both a demographic and epidemiological transition that are marked by an aging population and a triple burden of, cri of disease, driven mainly by the increase in the chronic non-communable diseases. The Global Burden of Disease Study, Mr. Speaker, estimated that NCDs accounted for approximately 85% of all deaths in St. Lucia. 85%, Mr. Speaker, of all deaths in St. Lucia, with the remainder split between injuries, 8%, and communicable maternal and neocetal causes at 7%. Among the NCDs, Mr. Speaker, the leading causes were cardiovascular disease at 32%, cancers at 21%, and diabetes, Mr. Speaker, at 9%. All, Mr. Speaker, having a serious, deleterious effect on our human capital. In fact, Mr. Speaker, it is estimated that the human capital as the main cause Sorry, it is, it is estimated, Mr. Speaker, that NCDs have a direct impact on human capital as they are the main cause for premature deaths among persons aged between 30 and 69. Mr. Speaker, it is with that backdrop that we thought it was necessary, Mr. Speaker, to include, to increase, Mr. Speaker, the cost of tobacco. Mr. Speaker, As we are aware, St. Lucia's debt to GDP ratio rose sharply during the COVID-19 crisis, increasing by 31 percentage points or 50 percent from the 2019 levels. Mr. Speaker, I would have made that point before at the estimates, but since the member brought it up, I thought it would be important to remind him that the question was not so much so that we, there was borrowing or that there was debt. The question was that in terms of our peers in the region, St. Lucia had borrowed two and a half times more than the average country. It's not that we had any issue with the debt or the borrowing. It's the question is, you borrowed two and a half times more than any of the peers in the region. So I hope that takes care of some of the concerns that the member for Suzel raised yesterday. Sorry? Let me tell you again. So on a comparative basis, this increase was sharper than that posted by other countries in the world. On average, countries worldwide increased their debt as a share of GDP by nine percentage points over the course of the global pandemic, or 16% from the 2019 levels. In the region, excluding St. Lucia, countries increased their debt as a share of GDP by 15 percentage points, or 21% from the 2019 levels. Less than half what was posted by Solution. And the World Bank figures, it's, it's, you can find it. It's not me making it up. Critically, Mr. Speaker, at 15% of fiscal revenues, the interest burden in Solution is also in the top quintile worldwide. And it's two and a half times the average of other countries in the region. I did not make it up, Bradley. Solution is the only country in the region to have increased the proportion of its budget devoted to interest payments by two percentage points during the COVID-19 crisis, and partly due, Mr. Speaker, a relatively large share of the deck stock on commercial terms. Leaving aside, Mr. Speaker, a particular other country in the ECCU, which continues to operate in a position of extended arrears and default, we are not aware of any of the government of Solutions peers in the region which have mounting payables or off-balance sheet commitments similar to those of the DFC that we have inherited, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have an open economy. We trade heavily with the international community. Therefore, our biggest, our budget cannot be developed, Mr. Speaker, in isolation, as it must take cognizance of the international developments that are affecting us. It is for this reason, Mr. Speaker, that the global perspective is always presented, albeit the various levels of detail. Mr. 
Mr. Speaker, despite broader reopening of the same large economies, global growth, Mr. Speaker, is estimated to have fallen sharply from 6.2% in 2021 to an estimated 3.4% in 2022. The global economy, Mr. Speaker, has been adversely affected by the war in Ukraine, the COVID-19 lockdowns in China, which has reduced global trade growth, and more recently, Mr. Speaker, the collapse of a prominent bank in certain areas, in certain parts of the world. Mr. Speaker, we saw widespread elevation in commodity prices in 2022, owing to the combination of supply and demand factors, resulting in unprecedented levels of inflation. We also witnessed coordinated monetary policy tightening, Mr. Speaker, to curtail rising inflation. This, Mr. Speaker, resulted in steep interest rates increases over, over the short period of time, resulting in the undesirable effect of eroding the balance sheet of many financial institutions, including banks. Mr. Speaker, while the increase in interest rates dampened activity, there was an easing of the supply chain bottlenecks, falling oil prices as energy markets adjusted faster than expected to the shock from the Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Mr. Speaker, I'll take a brief look at our major global trading partners. And I'll commence with the United States where growth, Mr. Speaker, is estimated to have slowed down from 5.9% in 2021 to 2% 2 in 2022. High level, Mr. Speaker, of headline inflation prompted the Federal Reserve to raise its key interest, its key interest rate steeply seven times between 2022 and 2023, from a range of 0% to 0.2.5% at the end of 21, 2021, to a range of 4.75 to 5% in March 2023, the highest level, Mr. Speaker, in 15 years. Mr. Speaker, inflation peaked at 9.1% in June. However, an average, the inflation However, on average, the inflation was 8.1% in 2022. Mr. Speaker, jobs growth was the second strongest on record with 4.5 million jobs added in 2022. Unemployment, Mr. Speaker, neared historic lows, dipping to 3.5% in December 2022, amid plentiful job opportunities as the demand for new hires exceeded the supply of available workers. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, in the case of Canada, despite global issues and uncertainty, as a commodity exporter, Canada's economy, Mr. Speaker, proved resilient in 2022. It was not as negatively affected as many other countries by the war in Ukraine, registering a growth rate of 3.5% in 2022 albeit lower than the 5% in 2021. In the United Kingdom, Mr. Speaker, the economy continued to recover by growing by 4.1% in 2022, after posting growth of 7.6% in 2021. However, Mr. Speaker, the UK economy remains the only major advanced economy that has not yet fully recovered to its pre-pandemic level. Amid political uncertainty, fears of a recession, the British pound fell to its lowest level in decades in late September, followed by a partial recovery thereafter. Mr. Speaker, I will then now move to the regional picture. Mr. Speaker, the CARICOM region experienced a more vibrant pace of economic recovery from the COVID-19 induced sharp downturn in 2020 amidst another external shock with considerable elevated commodity prices. Estimates show, Mr. Speaker, that most CARICOM countries recorded positive economic growth in 2022, driven by strong performances in the energy sector in emerging commodity exporting country Guyana and the continued rebound in tourist arrivals in tourism-dependent economies with the full lifting of COVID-19-related restrictions. Guyana, St. Lucia, and Barbados recorded the highest growth rates, while the lowest rates were registered in Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Speaker, amidst the challenges and uncertainty in the external economic environment, St. Lucia's economy is forecast 
to continue on its growth trajectory this year. The forecast is that, Mr. Speaker, it will expand in the range of 3.3 to 4% following a year-on-year -year growth of a projected 15% in 2022, which has been now revised, Mr. Speaker, to 18.1%. Mr. Speaker, this outlook is mostly predicted and spurred by the prospects for the lead tourism sector. The momentum towards full and sustained recovery in tourism from the sharp downturn in 2020 is expected to continue with the sector expanding at a decelerated or moderated pace relative to 2021 and 2022. Mr. Speaker, despite the reduced airlift, partly related to shortage of flight crew and the deteriorating economic conditions in major source markets, stayover arrivals are projected to increase by about 5 to 9% in 2023, due to a continued demand for travel encouraged by more relaxed protocols, marketing efforts conducted in major source markets. Mr. Speaker, the planned public investments in health, road, and other infrastructure are expected to boost construction activity in 2023 and beyond, as well as enhance the economy's long-term potential for growth. Ongoing and new private investments in hotel tourism plant in 2023 and subsequent years are also expected to broaden the economy's productive capacity with positive knock-on effects on the other support sector businesses and create new employment further to a pickup in works on the West Coast Road Rehabilitation Project. The project is embarking, the government is embarking on recommencement of the construction at the St. Jude Hospital and, Mr. Speaker, the Euronera International Airport, albeit, Mr. Speaker, in a different format. Further, Mr. Speaker, under both arrangements, works are expected to start on the Grosley Police Headquarters, the Grosley Police Headquarters, the Soufre Hospital, and the Halls of Justice. Under major, under major private sector construction, Works continue on the Marriott Hotel, Mr. Speaker. Works on the Dreams and Joy Tree Hotel and the possible commencement of the Hyatt Hotel in Sozel, Mr. Speaker. While consumer prices are expected to remain elevated, inflationary pressures have begun to ease. I expect it to continue in 2023, but at a moderated pace. High prices would raise, Mr. Speaker, the business costs and limit consumer purchasing power with a dampening effect on the, forecast, on the forecasted growth trajectory. Spending on imports, Mr. Speaker, is expected to rise further, owing to continued inflation and the anticipated expansion in economic activity. Mr. Speaker, the fiscal position is expected to deteriorate one second, slightly as capital expenditure picks up in 2023-2024. However, Mr. Speaker, public debt to GDP ratio is forecasted to decrease further to around 77%. The domestic economy, Mr. Speaker, faces a significant amount of challenges. Interrelated risk in 2023 and, and in the medium term, given the high level of uncertainty in the global economy. As a tourism dependent economy, there is a likelihood, Mr. Speaker, for lower growth in the domestic economy at this final stage of its recovery from COVID-19 pandemic. A resurgence, Mr. Speaker, of COVID-19 of COVID cases in China and the rest of Asia could stall China's recovery and set back the progress made in addressing global supply chains. A prolonged and escalated war in Ukraine, Mr. Speaker, would dampen growth outlook and, ex and exert upward pressure on food and other commodity prices worldwide. Mr. Speaker, more aggressive monetary policy tightening by the central banks with additional interest rate increases in advanced economies to combat inflation may weaken growth outcomes and raise the risk of a global recession. Moderate to major natural disasters, Mr. Speaker, including flooding from heavy rains, storms and hurricanes could derail the growth effort and reduce the level of economic activity in St. Lucia.
Mr. Speaker, fuel is not the only commodity that saw significant increases in prices in the last financial year. The price of flour, Mr. Speaker, despite our subsidy, did increase significantly, and the government was left with no choice but to absorb the prices for a period by selling to bakers at a deeply subsidized price. Mr. Speaker, as a result of selling wheat and whole wheat flour to bakers at a subsidized price, the government spent approximately $6.5 million, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are all aware that the citizen security and safety has a significant impact on the overall quality of life of a nation. Hence, Mr. Speaker, we stand by the premise of creating a safe and secure St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, this will be done through strategic, holistic approach by way of collaborative efforts on the various law enforcement agencies. Mr. Speaker, this will require the cooperation of the citizenry to accomplish this feat of containing the scourge of criminal activity on the island. Through the implementation of targeted actions, campaigns, programs, and policies, and the provision of the necessary resources, we will endeavor, Mr. Speaker, to foster a safer and more secure environment for citizens and visitors to this island. To this end, Mr. Speaker, we will focus on improving the working conditions and efficiency in operations. Also, Mr. Speaker, the repairs and maintenance to various police facilities will be advanced during this financial year. These include, Mr. Speaker, and first on the list, Scanneries, Mr. Speaker, Miku, Richfor, and the Masha police stations. Mr. Speaker, works on the refurbishment of the drug squad building will look to be completed. Additionally, to enhance resource capacity and improve response time and patrols, the current fleet of vehicles will be augmented. Specialized equipment will also be procured for system efficiency. Mr. Speaker, in the promotion of road safety and aiming to reduce the number of road fatalities and also lessen the burden on emergency response personnel, special equipment, Mr. Speaker, will be procured for the traffic management unit. This will include radar guns, ATVs, bicycles, and other vehicles, Mr. Speaker. We will also see the establishment of an impound lot for the unit. Mr. Speaker, a lot has been said about justice. There is, Mr. Speaker, a significant backlog in cases. The rise in criminal activity and the limited legal aid services are all factors which contributed to the erosion of the effectiveness of the legal system. Mr. Speaker, the system was further strained during the COVID-19 pandemic, where the hearing of some cases had to be postponed during that time. Mr. Speaker, with the introduction of the Swift Justice Initiative, we envisage a reduction in the backlog of criminal cases by augmenting technical and administrative support to the High Court. We anticipate, Mr. Speaker, that through enhancing the, the Enhancing the capacity of the court system, case processing can be reduced to at least one to two years. Mr. Speaker, a lot has been said about the coroner's court and the sheriff's office. Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure the member for Babono did go into greater detail during her contribution, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to just have a little conversation about strengthening our health outcomes. Mr. Speaker, it has been established that the health of a people determines the wealth of a nation. It is again this backdrop. St. Lucia continues to advance the primary health care approach as the main development strategy for improving health outcomes. Gains in key indicators, such as high rates of immunization coverage, decreased incidence of communicable diseases, improvements in the nutritional status of children, expansion of health and social services, increased life expectancy, and improvements to physical infrastructure are factors that have been realized. Mr. Speaker, universal health coverage has been the overarching framework guiding the work of the Ministry of Health. It is premised on the principles of universality of access, affordability, quality, and equity. 
In essence, Mr. Speaker, it is a commitment in ensuring that the population has access to appropriate quality health services without compromising their financial status. To date, the UHC unit has been staffed and is focused on coordinating and setting up the necessary mechanisms required to implement UHC. This implementation, Mr. Speaker, will be carried out in incremental steps over time. In this regard, the first step, Mr. Speaker, will include the program for mother and child health services, which will be launched in the first quarter of this financial year. This initiative, Mr. Speaker, is intended to cover the service coverage gap which exists in primary health care, such as laboratory investigations, as well as diagnosis, diagnostics for expectant mothers. Additionally, the performance-based financing pilot, Mr. Speaker, under the Health Strengthening Project funded by the World Bank, will also serve as part of the first phase of the UHC, in bridging the service gap in primary health primary health care for diabetes and hypertension and embedding a culture of linking finance to patient outcomes and results. Another aspect of the first phase of the UHC implementation, Mr. Speaker, is the registration of the population into a health information system and the issuance of a health card. Discussions have been ongoing with key stakeholders, including the Health Management Information Unit, both at the primary care and hospital level. Further, a communications plan for the UHC has been developed, which will be targeting different pockets of the population using different methods. There are also plans to engage local celebrities as advocates for UHC and to launch a logo and brand competition. A public survey has also been launched to garner the public's knowledge and expectations of UHC, which will be utilized to inform the development of the necessary regulations, legislation. Mr. Speaker, the member for, the, for Vifod North spoke yesterday about the establishment of the Cassius Urban Polyclinic. I will not go over what he's already said. Mr. Speaker, the social sector is faced with a myriad of challenges, coupled with the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic, which has further exacerbated the overwhelming pressure to deliver on social services to the vulnerable and marginalized in our society. Nonetheless, Mr. Speaker, efforts continue, to continue in reforming the assistance program and enhancing equity, efficiency, and transparency in the delivery of social protection services here in St. Lucia. In our relentless efforts to develop suitable programs to manage our aging population, the Home Caregivers Program is one such initiative, Mr. Speaker, which provides much needed care to older and disabled persons who are otherwise unable to care for themselves. Under the program, Mr. Speaker, training and certification of the caregivers is an ongoing process in order to provide quality care, enhance capacity, and also provide the necessary skill sets that can be used elsewhere. Mr. Speaker, as the country has been experiencing some heightened criminal activity, we will endeavor to pursue social initiatives which will act as preventative mechanisms to curb this ongoing situation. The social intervention, Mr. Speaker, was therefore designed to respond to the escalation of incidents of criminal activity in communities around St. Lucia. The project includes, Mr. Speaker, advocacy and public education and campaigns, parenting and family interventions, counselor services, strengthening of the community-based organizations, strengthen, strengthening the mentorship division in communities, training and capacity building in social crime prevention, and the implementation of basic life and employability initiatives, such as the TVET and business skills. The project is designed to be community-driven and implemented at the community level to receive the greatest impact. Mr. Speaker, there is another community-driven project which has halted, which was halted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Speaker, we have seen it fit to resume this initiative to combat social ills and ensure that we protect some of the most vulnerable children. The program I'm referring to, Mr. Speaker, is the after-school program, 
This program, Mr. Speaker, will include the reopening of 16 centers island-wide, namely in Fuasho, Monrepo, Wilton's Yard, Masha, Barbado, Marshy, Cicero, Bel Air, Soufret Town, Foster Jack, Reunion Sojel, Bellevue Vifort, Vifort Town, Rosa Jackmel, Canaries and OJ, Labry. Programming over the three days a week will be offered, Mr. Speaker. The centers will provide a safe environment which contributes to the development of children and youth by engaging them in meaningful activities after school hours. Programming such as life skills, arts and craft, homework assistance, psychosocial support, agriculture, music, as well as one meal per session will be provided, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, infrastructure development will continue to feature in this and other budget policy statements of this government as we address the aging face of our country. Mr. Speaker, for the fiscal year 2023-2024, whilst planning for major road projects such as the Shock to Rosley Highway expansion and the Feeder and Agriculture Road Rehabilitation Project Phase 2, we will proceed to continue undertaking the building of resilience into the road network and increased maintenance of public assets. In addition, Mr. Speaker, to the continuation of the Millennium Highway and West Coast Road reconstruction project, priority will also be given to the reconstruction and rehabilitation of other roads, rivers and watercourse maintenance, bridges and culverts, slope stabilization and community road development. Mr. Speaker, the formulation of the Infrastructure 2020-2030 Plan will see the review of all government's infrastructure assets to identify gaps in existing sectoral infrastructure plans and assessing policies and regulations which govern these sectors. To date, Mr. Speaker, stakeholder engagement has commenced, taking a critical look at major challenges and gaps hampering infrastructure development, including financing and other constraints. Thus far, Mr. Speaker, a consultant has been contracted to develop the plan. On completion, Mr. Speaker, the Infrastructure 2030 Plan is expected to be congruent with the Sustainable Development Goals, the 2030 Agenda for, 20, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, as well as our medium-term development strategy. Mr. Speaker, works will also commence on the West Coast Reconstruction Project, which, Mr. Speaker, to, the, to my delight, is, Mr. Speaker, the construction of the road between Kalisak and Sufre, which also, Mr. Speaker, includes the reconstruction of the answer, the replacement, Mr. Speaker, sorry, of the answer bridge. Mr. Speaker, this project is scheduled for completion by December 2024, um, and significant process progress has been made thus far. As a matter of fact, last week, Mr. Speaker, there was a meeting in Ansari with the, the affected residents who will be affected by the relocation of the bridge. The only five families, Mr. Speaker, they have gone on and chosen their, their replacement um, accommodation. They have agreed um, to facilitate any other requirements that the government requires as access to their property. And they're very happy, Mr. Speaker, for the new bridge in Ancillary. Mr. Speaker, work on this project is expected to, to intensify and contracts on the remaining lots have already been signed. So the Kalisak to Ansari Bridge, Mr. Speaker, the Ansari Bridge, the Ansari to Canaries Bridge, and the Canaries to Sufre Road, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the objective of this intervention is to significantly improve the quality and the road network in the country by enhancing and upgrading as well as increasing road bearing capacity. This will result in shorter commuting times and reduce vehicle maintenance costs to road users. During the last fiscal year, Mr. Speaker, 208 meters of road was rehabilitated. For this fiscal, a total of $4 million has been budgeted. Mr. Speaker, the Grosley Highway and Secondary Road Improvement, Mr. Speaker, is also uh, on the agenda and will be funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, co-financed by OPEC Fund for International Development and the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, Mr. Speaker. The Grosley Police Station, Mr. Speaker. The Grosley Police Station, Mr. Speaker, in September of last year, 
the bolt agreement with NIPRO for the construction of the Grosley police station was signed. Once again, Mr. Speaker, we have made good on our promise to commence construction of the new divisional police headquarters in Grosley during this financial year at an estimated cost of $35 million. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, for the Euronia International Airport Redevelopment Project, we will seek to upgrade the footprint of the HIA infrastructure and ecosystem at the airport. Notwithstanding, Mr. Speaker, taking into consideration the findings and recommendations of the cabinet appointed review committee for the project. The decision was taken, Mr. Speaker, to proceed with the redevelopment of HIA. However, a reduced scope, Mr. Speaker, will be deployed in relation to the terminal buildings, to the terminal building size. Hence, the construction of the air traffic control tower will commence, will commence during this fiscal year with completion earmarked for 18 months thereafter. This new air traffic control tower, Mr. Speaker, will be more than 100 feet, providing optimum airfield surveillance. Under the World Bank Caribbean Air Transport Connectivity Project, the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, through establishing a dedicated project implementation unit, seeks to improve the runway safety and resilience on HIA, modernize its air navigation system, strengthen its institutional capacity, and develop its contingent emergency response. For the Aerodrome Rescue, Mr. Speaker, and Firefighting Facility, the consultancy for design and supervision has been completed. A contract will soon be awarded if the works underway in the short term. Further to this, Mr. Speaker, the official signing of the runway rehabilitation consultancy with the Danish firm was successfully completed in December 2022 with preliminary investigations and meetings well underway. Another aspect is that of personnel, Mr. Speaker. Within such critical, critical sectors exist a myriad of skills and abilities that are necessary not only for compliance, but also for innovation and further development in the business of both air and seaports. Against this backdrop, SLASPLA has already commenced a full-scale people optimization program. This affirms the organization's effort to improve infrastructure and build a human resource component that will allow for greater efficiencies. Talent management, standard certification, and comprehensive systems will be the outcomes of these efforts. Mr. Speaker, as you know, a lot has been said about St. Jude's. The government, Mr. Speaker, has given its commitment to deliver the St. Jude's Hospital as an ultimate priority to the people of the South in the shortest possible time. To this end, Mr. Speaker, after much review, we have decided to return to the original structures for the hospital. Currently, Mr. Speaker, the cleaning, sanitization, fencing works has commenced and will be followed by the refurbishment works of the structures for which this year approval has been obtained. These activities will occur simultaneously, Mr. Speaker, with the design review, modifications required for DC approval, and for the necessary construction and refurbishment works to be carried out in pursuit of a fast-paced construction schedule. An amount, Mr. Speaker, of 32.75 million has been allocated in this year's budget for this project. Mr. Speaker, whatever is good for Sufre is always good for the people of Ansari Canyons. <laughs> The people of Sufre and environments have long awaited this new facility, Mr. Speaker, to replace the existing one, which is deemed too vulnerable to natural and man-made disasters. This new hospital, Mr. Speaker, will allow for effective operation of a well-resourced and functional medical facility in this part of the island. This facility, Mr. Speaker, will be a level four health facility, which will allow for overnight observation and short stays for non-critical patients. Such an initiative, Mr. Speaker, is also critical for the community and neighboring communities, given its involvement in the tourism sector. The facility is expected to be constructed through a design finance construct arrangement and will be located along the Safa Lewis Street in Sufrentown. Mr. Speaker, we have allocated $2 million in this budget for the commencement of this project. Construction of a new fire service headquarters, Mr. Speaker. This initiative, Mr. Speaker, will commence the process of a new fire service headquarters in the city. The current location of the fire service headquarters, Mr. Speaker, near the Cassius River, 
constantly places the fire service at risk of flooding during the hurricane season. This may therefore, Mr. Speaker, inhibit the department's ability to respond to emergencies in the event of a natural disaster. The intention therefore, Mr. Speaker, is to relocate the fire headquarters to Manuel Street to allow for entrance and exit to the building in either direction. Mr. Speaker, in pursuit of accelerating the pace of digital transformation in St. Lucia and bridging the existing gap in a number of and bridging the existing gap, a number of electronic services being offered to the citizenry, we have endeavored to achieve the following, Mr. Speaker. To date, the introduction of a digital government services plan, DigiGov, within the Division of Transport, the Ministry of Health and Civil Status Registry, has led the way, Mr. Speaker, in advancing government's digital agenda for the delivery of online services, which has resulted in the following. A reduction, Mr. Speaker, in the processing times for drivers related services from three months to 10 business days within the Division of Transport. The issuance and verification of COVID-19 digital vaccination certificates by the Ministry of Health. The availability of birth and death certificates online. Mr. Speaker, phase three of DigiGov is now scheduled to be deployed and will focus on the services of the Registry of Companies and intellectual property. The successful rollout of the online business registry will allow individuals and businesses the convenience of conducting name searches, reservations, business registration, and the application for tax account and national insurance numbers, amongst others. GINET, Mr. Speaker, another aim of the government is to increase in access to the broadband world island-wide for the development of the wireless land area network in public areas to enable locals and visitors to have free or low cost internet access. This initiative, Mr. Speaker, will be continued under the government island-wide GNET project, Mr. Speaker. For this upcoming year, we anticipate the completion of installation of 20 more sites and 45 wireless access points around San Lucia, in addition to 32 sites and 92 wireless points in which, which have already been completed under the project. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, with the impetus of putting people first and leaving no one behind, we have partnered with Flow for the Home Communications Relief Bundle for the provision of low-cost ICD services to approximately 5,000 low-income households. Mr. Speaker, data for decision-making is very important to any developing country. Information plays a vital role, Mr. Speaker, in evidence-based decision-making. This means, Mr. Speaker, that, decisions that, that, the decisions that, made, that, that the decisions made should be rooted in reliable data in order to make decisions that are understandable, accessible, and sustainable. It is therefore important to create an avenue in which the data available for decision-making is valid, reliable, precise, and timely. This would, Mr. Speaker, allow for the implementation of better policies for sustained social and economic development. In this regard, this initiative seeks to improve the capacity of the Central Statistical Office to produce and publicly disseminate statistical data in a timely manner, Mr. Speaker, to allow for evidence-based policy making at both the country and regional levels. To date, the data collection phase of the 2022 Population and Housing Census is in progress with an enumeration coverage rate of approximately 60%. We therefore implore the remaining 40% to cooperate in the provision of data required, Mr. Speaker, in order to make sound evidence-based decisions to the benefit of all citizens. Mr. Speaker, cognizant of the skills and experience um, that confront our youth, the government seeks to make the business environment less bureaucratic for the youth of this country and allow them the opportunity to transform hobbies into entrepreneurship and skills into businesses. It is against this backdrop, Mr. Speaker, the newly constituted Youth Economy Agency aims to carve out a unique space in the general economic system for youth entrepreneurship, as well as business growth for providing resources to young people to create sustainable livelihoods for business development, finance, 
marketing support as well as training and mentorship. This business speaker will provide an avenue for young people who have special interests in certain lines of economic activity, such as sports, music entertainment, designing, the creative economy, cultural activities, digital economy, arts, Mr. Speaker, agriculture, the blue economy, amongst others. Accordingly, Mr. Speaker, venture capital facilities, grants and loans will be allotted for workable projects. Thus, time, Mr. Speaker, the Board of Directors for the new agency has been appointed and is mandated to set the strategic priorities, objectives, performance targets, and organizational policies to inform the youth economy strategic plan. The board is also currently conducting a recruitment and selection exercise to find the best fit for its secretariat. In addition, Mr. Speaker, office space has been identified for the agency and is currently being retrofitted to commence serving the young people of St. Lucia immediately upon completion. We envisage, Mr. Speaker, that the agency will address priority, priority issues as follows. Provide the necessary incentives and opportunities for young people to pursue their dreams. Create a new enterprise culture and reduce the constraints that young people face in accessing credit and finance and the availability of support services. Cater to young individuals and provide venture capital facilities, grants and loans for their projects. Provide an avenue for young people who have special interests in certain lines of economic activity. Attract, Mr. Speaker, and integrate rural roof and urban at-risk youth. The immediate outcomes for the advancement of the objectives of the youth economy, Mr. Speaker, will include access to economic opportunities, business facilitation, technology and institutional infrastructure, ecosystem for youth advocacy and development. In this year's budget, Mr. Speaker, a total of four million has been allocated towards this development. The, the, the Minister for Tourism has not spoken, so I'm not gonna spend any more time I'll allow him to discuss his, his goodies for tourism. Uh, but I, I will just make mention of one particular one, Mr. Speaker, because of a specific interest in my constituency. The OACS Regional Transformation, the OACS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, Mr. Speaker. We have seen a rescoping of the activities which was done after an assessment of tourism development priorities for rebuilding the tourism industry. In this upcoming fiscal year, Mr. Speaker, we anticipate the commencement of key civil works. This alignment of activities will correspond with the policies of sustainable tourism through community and heritage tourism development. For the following activities under this project, the architectural designs and supporting technical specifications for the associated civil works are currently ongoing and in some cases finalized. And in the case of the canneries, market and restaurant, Mr. Speaker, work has already commenced. Uh, but the Cashries Market Container Box Park, the Social Craft Center Rehabilitation, the Marigold Waterfront Redevelopment, and Sphere Bay Lookout, Bakai Beach Park, Grosley Beach Park Development, Sufre Old Trafford Project, Concessionary Project Goods. But in the case of Canaries, Mr. Speaker, as I said previously, work has already commenced on the construction of our market and restaurant. Mr. Speaker, huh? we, now, we now focus on aspects related to our cultural heritage emerging from the pandemic period. This year's carnival celebration is intended to showcase the resurgence of community carnivals, including Calypso competition, pageants, still pant, and junior carnival. Mr. Speaker, Ansari Canaries will also be taking part, not so much so in jazz, but we will certainly be looking forward to having our own little carnival with the assistance, with the assistance of, of, the, mem of the Minister for, for Tourism. Mr. Speaker, although the agricultural sector has been beset with a number of persistent challenges, it continues to play a vital role in our socioeconomic development as a nation by way of economic gains through exporting, food and nutrition security, and poverty reduction through stable livelihoods for the people of this nation. Notwithstanding that we are currently facing a crisis unlike what we have seen before. Encountering rising food import prices sparked by the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic, further amplified, Mr. Speaker, by the Ukraine war, while enduring high cost of production and navigating climate disruptions. 
However, Mr. Speaker, we as a member for Anzuri Canaries, you have 10 minutes left. Member for Castry Central. Mr. Speaker, I wish to invoke Standing Order 3210 to permit the member for Ansari Canaries an extra 15 minutes to conclude his presentation. Members, the question is that Standing Order 3210 be invoked to allow the member for Ansari Canaries an additional 15 minutes in which to conclude his presentation. And I'll put the question as many as that opinion say aye. As many as the country opinion say no, I think the eyes have it, the eyes have it. Mr. Speaker, most, most importantly of all, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, most important of all, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, most important of all is the, the blue economy, Mr. Speaker. Yes. In, re in recognition of the sustainable management and protection of St. Lucia's expensive ocean space, extensive ocean space, and associated marine and coastal resources as key drivers of economic growth, job creation, and diversification, the unleashing of the blue economy in the Caribbean project will seek to build on existing policy measures that promote the sustainable and integrated use of marine resources while preserving the health of our ocean ecosystem. By strengthening the sustainability and competitiveness of three critical interconnected sectors, namely tourism, fisheries and agriculture, and waste management. Mr. Speaker, we anticipate great accomplishments in this area. Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia's high level of economic, social, and environmental, and climate vulnerability exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, ongoing Ukraine war, and climate disruption, natural disasters, we made a major concern for this government. We are cognizant of the fact that matters such as food security is quickly becoming a critical concern as there continues to be a spike in the food prices which brings to the forefront the matter of ability of food, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I will turn very briefly to housing. We, Mr. Speaker, have made arrangements for the lands, hopefully, um, in Jackmel, in, in Masque, 100 homes in Masque, Mr. Wave, Naipro, and also in Belvedere and Canaries, Mr. Speaker. But I allow the Minister for, for Housing to delve more into that, but Mr. Speaker. But we are looking forward, Mr. Speaker, to our fair share of housing, Mr. Speaker, in the constituency of Ansari Canaries. Mr. Speaker, the government has a number of funding options available to finance the 2023-2024 budget. For the fiscal year, Mr. Speaker, expenditure will be financed from a mixture of recurrent revenue capital revenue, grants, loans, treasury bills, and bonds. This government, Mr. Speaker, has examined the available financing options with a view to select the most fiscally prudent package. Mr. Speaker, there are many external shocks which at any time can affect St. Lucia and the wider Caribbean region, such as pandemics, wars, and price shocks, among others, as we have all experienced. This, this government, Mr. Speaker, will continue to be fiscally responsible by avoiding the wastage of funds and seek to mitigate against those external shocks with every mechanism available. We are a government with a conscience and we will ensure that this country, Mr. Speaker, remains on a sustainable path now and in the future. We will demonstrate this by our record of our fiscal targets, other economic indicators such as the primary and current surpluses. We will ensure, Mr. Speaker, that we take the advice of our technical staff and support organizations to achieve these goals. Mr. Speaker, this government has given the favorable, has been, has given the favorable year end look, favorable year end outlook of the 2023. Examine the policies guiding the collection of revenue and will introduce some policy adjustments intended to enhance our revenue and give us the necessary fiscal space that will assist in times of emergency. Mr. Speaker, 
this government is strongly of the view that in normal times, we should not have to borrow to fund operations of government. The current operations of government have to be financed by the revenue that we generate. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, and ideally, we should endeavor to fund part of our capital expenditure with the remainder of our surpluses on the current account. Mr. Speaker, this is what countries that are serious about fiscal responsibility do. Mr. Speaker, the government will remain on the path of being trustworthy and will continue its bilateral arrangements with friendly governments and organizations to seek grant funding to fund policies for the benefit of the people of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, for our embassies and partners, we will continue to forge new partnerships, negotiate new bilateral agreements on the basis of mutual cooperation. Mr. Speaker. Ah, so, Mr. Speaker, before my time runs out, I would like to just spend a little time on what matters very much to me. Mr. Speaker, nearly two years has elapsed since the people of Ansari Canaries has reposed their trust in me to make representation on their behalf. My thanks, Mr. Speaker, and gratitude to them knows no bounds. Since that time, Mr. Speaker, I have dedicated my life to serving them, my con to serving my constituents and the people of St. Lucia. This has been a, a period of learning and many a valuable lesson have been learned. I have, Mr. Speaker, and continue to fully immerse myself in working towards fulfilling the promises made to put them first. Though, Mr. Speaker, you acknowledge, they acknowledge, Mr. Speaker, the constituency is receiving much needed attention from this government. You rightly have and continue to demand that I make myself more available to you. Amidst all of you have exercised your patience. I do recognize your demands are from a genuine and selfless concern for your constituency. And again, Mr. Speaker, I thank you. I pledge that this 2023-24 financial year to fully engage even more all sectors of our community, our councils and development committees, our schools and PTAs, our religious groups, our youth and sporting groups, our farmers, our farmers and fisher folk, our transportation sector, our citizens, citizens, and special needs projects. Mr. Speaker, I have gone very fondly of, of keeping my secrets that have been given. But Mr. Speaker, just to just give a quick note as to some of the activities that has taken place and are about to take place in the constituency of Ansari Canaries. Mr. Speaker, as the Minister for Sports indicated yesterday, we now have lights. We now have lights on the Otabo Court, Mr. Speaker, which we never had before. A consultancy, Mr. Speaker, is underway to help us for once and for all deal with the issues of the Ansari fish fry, Mr. Speaker. As you know, Mr. Speaker, it has been an off and on start and stop process for some years. And clearly, Mr. Speaker, we have not gotten it right in the past. So we have decided, Mr. Speaker, to engage a consultant, Mr. Speaker, to give us the bare bolts of what is necessary to make it a very viable and successful endeavor. This time, Mr. Speaker, when it recommences, it's going to recommend to stay and not recommend to start shortly after. Mr. Speaker, the Vanna Venus Link Road, Mr. Speaker, is almost complete, and we expect the opening, official opening ceremony to take place very shortly. The bridge in Ansari, Mr. Speaker, has been replaced. We have the market, as I mentioned earlier, in Canaries. Relief, Mr. Speaker, is also on the way for the residents of Tetchume. Relief, Mr. Speaker, for the Delago Road. Mm -hmm. The Canaries Police Station, Mr. Speaker, having been slated down for repairs, is also, Mr. Speaker, a beneficiary of a vehicle, which was never the case before. There's a smarting of the Ansari Wellness Center, which we are about to do. There is the solarization, Mr. Speaker, of the fishing port and fishing area in Ansari, with the, the savings, Mr. Speaker, will, be go, will go towards creating a fund for fishermen to access upon retirement or when they want to send their children to school. The library, Mr. Speaker, is also in Canaries, has also been um, renovated. The new library, Mr. Speaker, has been done at the Ansari Primary School, and the member for Cashew's officer said to me he's going to help me with my steel pan shed in Canaries, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, above all, Mr. Speaker, the Millet Court, Mr. Speaker, will be upgraded. And finally, Mr. Speaker, for all these shenanigans, Jack Mill, Mr. Speaker, will finally receive the lights for the film, Mr. Speaker. That's right. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the time, and I look forward, Mr. Speaker, to continuing to serve my constituency and my country, despite all the, the noise, Mr. Speaker. The idea when you decide to become a member of parliament, in my mind, was to get the work done for the people of your constituency. We are not going to pretend, we are not going to pretend to support, to support them like we did with the case of my constituent playing football overseas, where the member for Miku South attempted to take benefit for that. But he was, he was dealt with very appropriately by the mother. That, Mr. Speaker, only happened because of the member for Cassius East, the Prime Minister, who made available to us, Mr. Speaker, the ability to assist our constituents on specific matters. And for that, Mr. Speaker, again, I thank him, and I thank you, and I thank the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.